It's not gonna like those angles. You got a problem with my angles? Just saying they're a little bit off. Farhawk's crazy, but he's not that crazy. Need to remind you of the doppelganger incident. Point well taken. Mm -hmm. for a long time, but a little vodka warm you right up. That's not funny. Why is it that jokes about communists are so socially acceptable? I mean, is it the mustache? Because Hitler had a mustache. And I think Hitler's mustache was a lot funnier than Joseph Stalin's mustache. I hate it when Asians have mustaches. Did Hitler have a mustache? Does that make me racist? What, the, uh, the Asian thing? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Man, these things happen. Wait a second. Why was our boss on the receiving end of a Joseph Stalin picture portrait? A good question. I guess they really like to run tight operations. You know, loose lips sing great ships, and they make for good parties. Say, did you ever see that movie, um, The Inner Circle? What's that? The Inner Circle. It's a movie about the guy who ran Stalin's projector. Sorry, Calvin. I'm not as big of a library nerd as you are. <laughs> you know I got that at the library? Because it's not much of a reach, is Stupid kids with library. I don't appreciate your empathy towards our public services. The library is a great place. And at least it's not as bad as Mark. I must be honest, every library lover believes that he'll find his true love at the library while requesting a copy of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy at the certain others he does. But Mark took that desperation to a whole new level. Mark used to call the library every day. <laughs> he imagined the recorded voice was his perfect, sexy librarian, you know, the woman of his dreams. Everybody was happy until Mark gathered up the courage to go meet the girl. The day he came, he went, dressed up in his best hipster sweater, square glasses, and carefully ruffled hair. Sadly, he found only truth. It was an automated message. They've really made great strides in those automated messages, haven't they? Great mahogany. I'm just saying that if I were a peasant, maybe a few years younger, and Joy there asked me to collectivize my farm, I'd be all over it. Okay, history nerd. Did they have hot librarians in communist Russia? At least my friend Mark is not as bad as your friend Tyler. What are you talking about? I'm talking about punitive dating. I'll defend that to the end. It's so, so self defeating, so wrong headed, so brilliant. He's a moron. Let me set the scene for you. It's a party. Tyler's having a great time. He's no longer entangled in the thoughts of any woman. He's free at the party enjoying himself. He's watching Ghost World. Steve Buscemi is laying down his magic, as is his cousin. Have you ever felt a deep hatred for someone you're physically attracted to? This girl, Rose, is flirting with Tyler like crazy. She's giggling. She's touching. She's all over the place. And the attention is there, and she's eating it up. Well, of course, Ghost World is ruined, but Tyler has a plan. Payback. The next day, he calls up Rose. He then proceeds to ask her out so clumsily, so foolishly, so rudely, that she has no choice but to say no. Thus ensuring prolonged awkwardness. Never again will she interrupt his quality movie time. 
She'll be too busy fleeing every room he enters and trying to avoid eye contact. I must admit, the plan does have its finer aspects. But to submit yourself to that kind of humiliation, that kind of rejection, is so nothing for someone as shameless and tactless as Tyler. Have you ever noticed how we spend all of our time talking about other people, living vicariously through their adventures? How about them, Galveston? Americans seem 